Welcome back to Bond Simplified. We began this series by explaining what bonds are and then slowly moved on to talking about how you can use bonds to build a long-term investment strategy and also how you can use bonds for short-term goals. When we talk about investing, the focus is usually more on returns than risk. However, risk is just as important to understand before you invest. In this episode, we will discuss the different types of risks associated with bond investing and why you need to be aware of them. The first thing is inflation risk. So let's talk about inflation risk, which is something that's more generic and impacts all types of investments, not just bonds. In simple terms, inflation risk is the chance that your investment is unable to generate returns to beat annual price rise in the economy. Inflation is nothing but the official measure for price rise across majorly used goods and services in the country. The government has mandated an official basket of chosen goods and services, which includes fruits and vegetables, education, rental, electricity, fuel, and so on. Put all these things together in that basket and then how the aggregate price of that entire basket changes from year to year is tracked. This is inflation and it is measured once every month compared to the same month last year. When prices rise, the value of your money falls. This happens because you can no longer buy the same quantity at the same price and you get less when prices rise. Hence, value of money declines thanks to inflation. If an investment is unable to deliver returns that beat inflation, the value of your money despite the investment return is declining. Fixed income investments like bonds run an inflation risk because return is fixed over a period of time and inflation is not. If inflation spikes during the tenure of your investment, the fixed return will mean that the real post-inflation return you earn is lower. Moving on to more specific bond risks, interest rate risk is basically an opportunity loss which can translate into price fluctuation. Let me explain in simpler terms. As we know, bonds come with a fixed return or coupon rate. They also come with a tenor of a few years. Investors need to hold the bond for that fixed period after which the issuing company returns the original investment you made along with any accumulated interest. Say you invest in a bond that is paying a coupon of 7% a year and has a tenure of 5 years. A year after you buy this bond, the RBI hikes its repo rate and the ripple effect means that the coupon rates for similar bonds as what you have already bought a year ago are now higher at say 8% for the same tenure. Because you have locked into the one bond already earlier, you lose out on the opportunity to get the higher return from this new 8% bond. Hence, this is an opportunity loss. Now, the second layer of this is relevant if the bond you have invested in is listed on the stock exchanges. When a security, any security lists on stock exchanges, there is a daily quoted price for that security for buyers and sellers. When interest rates rise, the existing bond investors grow, go through an opportunity loss. The price of that existing bond on exchanges falls. What you have is a notional daily loss to deal with. The price adjusts lower to reflect the opportunity loss thanks to the higher prevailing interest rates. The opposite happens when rates fall prices rise. I mentioned no, notional loss because nothing changes for the interest you are receiving from the bond issuer and also the return of your original investment at maturity. Interest rate risk as reflected in price fluctuations is an interim phenomenon and you can balance out this risk by matching your investment horizon with the tenor of the bond or the average maturity of the bond fund in case you're using a portfolio of bonds. If rates are headed lower and bond prices are rising, it may well be an opportunity to make capital gains by selling before time. 
But remember, if you do sell early, you will forego any future interest payouts. One part of bond investing is the return you get via interest coupon. This is the fixed return and hence bond investing is equated with a strategy for stable returns. However, the other part is the quality of the issuer. If you buy a bond from a poor quality issuer or a company which is struggling to generate sufficient cash flows, there is a chance, a risk that you may lose your investment. If the company is unable to generate the required cash flow to repay bond investors, your investment will drown. Default on bonds is an extreme case and something that you won't experience too often if you are conscious about investing in investment grade bonds. To identify and measure quality of bonds, licensed credit rating agencies assign credit grades to bonds. These start from AAA, which is the highest quality in bonds, down to D, which is junk bond or the lowest quality. Investment grade bonds fall between AAA and BBB minus. Thus, you have AAA plus or minus, AA plus or minus, A plus or minus, and BBB plus. Question is, why would anyone buy a poor quality bond? Well, the reason is high return. Usually, a bond which is top quality does not need to offer a very high return to lower investors as it is a premium bond. However, the lower you move on the credit rating scale, the higher the return or the coupon offered. Even if the bond doesn't default and instead uh, falls, say, one level on the credit scale, it impacts the market price in case of listed bonds. Then if you want to exit in the secondary market and the credit rating has been downgraded, you may end up making a loss on your investment. Hence, when it comes to investing in bonds, quality is important. So that was all about credit risk and default risk. Talking about listed bonds, well, let's move on to also liquidity risk. The benefit of listed bonds is that you are able to exit before bonds mature by selling on the stock exchange. What happens if you're looking for this uh, early exit and there is no buyer? This is called liquidity risk and impacts bonds issued by companies which are relatively smaller in size, hence the supply of such bonds is limited and so is the demand. Liquidity risk is crucial because once again, if you don't find a buyer, you may not be able to offload your bond investment. Liquidity risk can be faced by individual investors like you and me. This is more visible in funds though, where sometimes when bond funds are unable to sell some of the bonds they hold, they may have to write off that value, which lowers the value of the investment you have made in that fund. For individual bonds, if you want to sell before maturity and the liquidity is low, you may not be able to complete that transaction at all or at the market price. You may have to accept a lower price in case of low liquidity. Picking high quality bonds with sufficient liquidity is really important. Now, lastly, we have reinvestment risk. Very quickly, we will cover this uh, risk. This is somewhat linked to interest rate risk. Bonds have a fixed tenure and if you have uh, remained invested for that period and want to reinvest the sum that matures, ideally you are looking for a similar return or higher return. But sometimes a falling interest rate environment uh, may not uh, be suitable and you have to choose reinvestment at a lower interest rate. This risk can be partially tackled with a bond laddering strategy which we spoke about in episode 6. While all bond investors must be aware of these risks that we have spoken, some like uh, credit risk can be avoided by choosing certain types of high quality bonds. All these risks can be minimized though if you diversify your bond investment allocation. Whether you invest directly in bonds or baskets of bonds, make sure you build in sufficient diversification so that if any of these risks do play out, not all your bonds in the portfolio get impacted. Thank you for watching. This educative series is brought to you in association with thefixedincome.com. 
make sure to catch episode 8 where we are going to talk about sovereign gold bonds.